You use them as you do normal cards, but they have some negative effect. Like for instance, this is a negative three and it's a wild. And the only way to get rid of it is if you Doesn't use it. Does it vasectomy? It does, it's a vasectomy. What's it say? A surgical procedure would have been far less bloody and painful, yet just as effective. Hello, welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today we're going to review Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift and it plays one to six players and it is about one to two hours long. And it's for 12 and up. And in Perdition's Mouth, you're going to be playing a dungeon crawler similar to games like Descent in which you're going to uh, descend into dungeons and accomplish missions, uh, face cultists and other types of worms and insectoids. They're attempting to sacrifice victims and control the different areas and generate summoners and summon demons and all that kind of stuff. You have a bunch of different characters to play as and each of the characters Characters have unique abilities and stats, and you're going to be moving around the game board attempting to complete whatever mission it is on the scenario. You can play it as a one-shot, which is like a single game, or you can play it as a campaign, where you go from one to the next to the next scenario until you get to the very end. And you lose by all your characters dying at any point during the campaign where you don't have any more characters to select, um, or if all your characters fall over in a specific scenario, and you win if you can get through the entire thing. The game is unique because it has a Rondell system, and actually has two of them, where you'll be using these little boards here, and you'll be attempting to move around them, select specific actions, and attempt to uh, accomplish your goals, while the enemy will be doing the same thing. We're just going to review the game, which will give you a good idea of how to play without giving you a full how to play and how to set up because it's such a massive game. Like, there's there's a lot to this game. I mean, even just the setup is pretty pretty intense. So if you're not used to a very thick and engaging game with a good like 40 pages of rules, then uh, buckle up. We're gonna go ahead and get into it now. All right, so as we review it, I'll kind of talk about the game as well and like how we set it up. Like we each get our character, we each select a board based on the scenario. The board is set up based on whatever that specific scenario placard says and it tells you everything that you need to know on here. On the other side is the story and the story follows a storyline as you go from one scenario to the next. And you're basically just fighting cultists and destroying uh, demons and like insectoids, like creepy, creepy crawlers here. And uh, each of the characters here uh, are going to be unique in some way. They also have a different language on the back. And uh, based on your HP is your stats, and you'll lose health, you'll lose stats. Each of your characters has a special, which you'll be able to utilize uh, throughout the game. So uh, that's the very basic premise of the game. It's a dungeon crawler meets a rondelle. Well, what is a rondelle? Do you know what a rondelle is? No. No? Uh, this board here is a rondelle board. Um, a lot of games use it, but I've never seen a dungeon crawler use it before. This thing here lets you select actions, right? Mm -hmm. So how does this board work? Can you explain that to them? So each turn you have to move your little thing to whichever one you want as long as it's open. And to move it, it's one action point yeah. each time you move it. So I want to move from my move space and I want to be able to sprint, right? Um, I'm going to have to move through the special and through the attack to get to sprint. But because attack is filled up, I can then move to this. I can ignore special. that. I'll go, yeah, the special is <laughs> filled up. I, can, I go through the attack and I go to the sprint. And I have a certain number of action points, usually in a dungeon crawler with action points. You spend them to do certain actions. In this case, you will use it, use them to move around this board. And then whatever's left over, you will utilize on the specific action you choose. So I would go one and then two to sprint. Then I'll do what Sprint says, which is I will basically use my action points, the rest of them, to move on the board. And then I will draw a card from this response deck, wherever you are. And uh, whatever I get, a plus three, will in, 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 be included with my action points. So if I have two action points left, I draw this card, it gives me a plus three, I have five, I move around the board with this. And that's how all these work. Some of them will let you defend, which will protect you. Others will let you attack and move. Some of them will let you rest, getting cards back from your deck into your hand. And others are going to let you do special attacks, like, for instance, the aim shot and the bash. Or utilize your special, but only one person can be on here at any point in time. And so you'll be moving around the board, and then you always have to go in the same order, and you have to spend actions to pass up certain spaces, utilize those action points, and then manipulate your character in that way. Did you enjoy the Rondell style play? Like, I know you've never played a dungeon crawler, let alone mm -hmm. a Rondell game. What do you think? Um, I, I think it, 
It was cool, but it kind of sucked when I'm like, man, I want to go all the way to the move spot, but it's all the way across the board, so I like use up all of my action points to get to the one that I want. Yeah, so if you're on the special here and you want to go to the move space, it was it's going to cost you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven action points in order to do that. And then let's just say you had seven action points, and when you get here, you're not out of action points, so you can't move unless you draw draw a card and manipulate that uh, action points with your cards in hand. So uh, you can use action points and you can use cards to increase your action points, but each of the cards have a unique item, a symbol that tells you what that card can be used for. This is a plus three, but it can only be used for attacking in a special. Here's a plus three, but it's a while because it has all the different symbols. And then here is a plus one, but you get to draw a reaction card and add that number, which is a plus one, to whatever symbol you would like, move, special, attack, etc., etc. And so these cards can benefit you to increase the amount of points you use, but you only get a certain amount, and the only way you draw them is when you go on a space with a card symbol, one of those little star mm -hmm. cards here. I love the deck. It's kind of like an explanation of the game and also a review of each of the portions that I enjoyed. <laughs> I love the deck of cards. You start with a certain number, you can have a certain number in your hand, and you can use them however you'd like, whether it be for yourself or for your opponents. You can't use them after the enemy has drawn a card for their reaction, so you have to use everything you want before the, the, the enemy starts their go but they can be beneficial in giving you bonus points. So even if you have to go all the way around the board on this little tracker here, uh, you might only have one action point left, but you can still utilize cards to increase that or utilize cards from your opponents as they give them to you in order to increase that as well. So there is some mitigation even if you have to go all the way around the board, but it kind of forces you to use at least uh, one or two actions, uh, sorry, two or three actions before you get all the way around the board or you'll lose all your points. So it's kind of like a give and take for me. Additionally, like we were just talking about, after the players do all of their actions, they choose the players in any order, and then they do all their specific actions going around the board, the enemy will take their turn. And the enemy has a threat level, which determines how many enemies come out when they spawn. They're also gonna have these little tokens here. And the enemy mainly just uses the reaction deck. So they'll draw one of these cool cards here. That's a plus one. That means that if they start on an attack space, they will move clockwise one space, and then they will use this, this little other token to move across the board and perform the actions in order. So for instance, if I got a plus four, it would move from the attack to the move area here, and they would spawn units, each unit would move, each unit would attack, and then each unit would move again. So based on the reaction, it will determine how many different actions the enemies have. Did you uh, enjoy that aspect of the game? It was scary because I feel like they kept doing more actions than we were able to. <laughs> yeah, because whenever it moves to, even if it's just a plus one for the enemies, every single enemy will move. If it's a plus two and they, maybe it's a move and an attack, all the enemies will move and then all the enemies will attack if possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna explain how they all attack and whatnot because it's a standard dungeon crawler. Uh, they move, if they're in range of you, they attack and they will attack you by adding their points to their points that they get from the reaction cards. And you would do the same thing. Um, for defending as you do it for attacking. Whoever has the higher point total wins, and the person, if they're attacking, if they have higher, they do a damage. They have these stats on these boards here, which are actually really easy to understand, I thought. You look at the character, you find how much health they have, and you find out how many stats they have. One attack, one defense, uh, one range, and they can move two, and it tells you in which way they move. Some enemies will move towards you, other enemies will move to an exit, because that will increase the alarm and make the spawns more, more prevalent, more likely to have more units spawning. And there's a certain number of units that are kind of uh, in these spawn pools that you'll have to bring onto the board here during certain portions of the game, uh, which is uh, super cool. I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, so it has these boards. It's a rondelle system that functions with the game itself. And you manipulate a rondelle with the players and the enemy will as well. And then you just go back and forth. And that's literally the entire game. You go back and forth. You do all your actions on your board. The enemies will do all their actions on their board and you'll rinse and repeat. Uh, so that's my summary of how the game works, utilizing cards here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the game itself. So the scenarios are going to give you flavor text. Did you enjoy the flavor text here? Yeah. Yeah, these are fun. I think they did a really good job of explaining what's going on in the scenario. And progressively, we did at least three different campaigns here, uh, learning mm, different portions of the campaign as you go along. You're basically trekking deeper into, like, the cultist layer. And when you start the game off, sadly, uh, because you're doing the campaign as opposed to a one-shot, 
there's not as many things as you can do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big issue. But I also think that you have to go into it knowing that because it even tells you on the card when you're doing it that there's yeah. very limited things you can do. Yeah, which that was our mistake, my mistake. I wanted the treasure to make our characters stronger. <laughs> And she decided to climb up this really tall building and uh, break the treasure chest, or unlock it, I should say, and she was never able to do so. Luck was not on her side. But she left the healer and the priest alone at the bottom of the board here, and uh, they got surrounded, and my poor dwarf priest did yeah, not survive. I was stuck in the room with the treasure chest, so I couldn't save you guys. <laughs> and that's because uh, on the board here, there's like terrain. Some of it's easy to go through, other of it's more challenging. You can take damage in certain ways based on if there's enemies around you. And some spaces are really hard to get through, requiring a lot of action points. Mm -hmm. So she was able to get through, but it was really hard for her to get back. So it stuck me and Callie, uh, the two small weak characters, at the bottom with a ton of different characters there uh, surrounding us to the point where we were unable to escape, or I was unable to escape. And of course, they both made it. She made it unharmed, our tank, and Callie made it at the skin of her teeth. I think she had like two health left or something like that. And the characters function uh, differently, speaking about that. Like, your character was uh, big, beefy, it ran around, it could do a bunch of damage. My character was good at healing wounds, but not healing wounds inside of a deck, which we'll explain in a bit. And then her character, Callie's, had zero damage, so she had to use her cards, but she had a range of six. So she had a very, very long radius to do damage. Um, these these guys, all the things on the board here, which we're talking about, like the treasure chest, they'll let you draw treasure cards here, uh, which we didn't get to see a whole lot of in the game. Uh, but they will we let you... We didn't get to see any of them. <laughs> because we never I got them. get the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I went through the deck here. Uh, some of them are consumable. Others will last a certain period of time. And others will last forever. And you'll place them on your character board in the different positions, these different slots here. And they'll give you unique benefits. Uh, benefits and bonuses. Uh, if you draw potions, you're going to be able to draw again. So you can actually draw a potion and then get another treasure card in addition to that. But you can also draw a trap and then draw another treasure chest as well. So some of these treasure chests can be booby-trapped as well. Um, and the spawning pits are cool too. It shows where the insectoids spawn. If you defeat the insectoids, spawning pit will increase the alarm track but stop the insectoids from spawning. The characters in general function pretty similarly except for the cultists who they're always walking towards the exit so that they can raise the alarm on the uh, bad guy board, thusly increasing the amount of bad guys that spawn, which I, I, I really enjoyed that as well. Um, artwork, quality of the game is, is excellent. I, I really, really enjoyed the artwork of the game. I thought it did very well. All the miniatures are really nice, easy to tell the difference between, easy to determine from what uh, they are onto what they represent on the boards here, and of course, as well on the uh, this, this this thing here as opposed to what can go on. There's a ton of different variants. There's easy modes, there's hard modes, there's slightly hard modes. You can add a little hard mode to just the scenario or maybe just your character can have a hard mode and it'll tell you on the card if it, like here, Kelly has one, it's called Diva and it says, uh, whenever another hero aids you, you draw a reaction and when you resolve the action, if it has a symbol on it and some of these cards have a nasty like red symbol on it, uh, then the hero's aid is reduced to zero. So that's re really nasty. When you take damage, you will lower yourself on the wound track here. You have a three, you go to two to one, and you die. If you take a wound, basically your attack, your defense is lower than the enemy's attack, you will draw a wound card. These are wound cards. How nasty are these? They're terrible. These are terrible. You do not want them. They will go on top of your deck, your player deck, so the next card you draw is going to be a wound, and it's not going to be very nice. You use them as you do normal cards, but they have some negative effect. Like, for instance, this is a negative three. And it's a wild. And the only way to get rid of it is if you use it. Does it say vasectomy? It does. It's a vasectomy. What's it say? A surgical procedure would have been far less bloody and painful, yet just as effective. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a negative three to any specific uh, uh, type of event you'd like to do. If you want to <laughs> run, if you want to sprint, if you want to attack, if you want to use a special or defend, this will give you a negative three. You play this card. You try and play it in the best way you can without having a lot of negatives towards you, but they're terrible and you don't want mm -hmm. them. And in addition, when you take wounds, your stats get lower most, most of the time, unless you're hurt, then they get stronger. Um, and you'll have less specific actions you can use, you might have less attack and less defense, and you get progressively weaker and less able to do things. My dwarf at the very end was basically stuck. 
he couldn't really get anywhere. He had to go through units and there's like spaces that you can't go through if you have certain amounts of enemies next to you, like there's a cost to it. And so you will die. And when you die, your character falls over. And in this game, you don't, you don't resurrect unless a card says otherwise. And there's probably some treasure cards that do that. Uh, if a character walks over you, you're literally removed from the map. And once you complete your objectives and your characters escape, the most interesting thing in my opinion about this game is you keep playing and you choose a new character. And because there's no increase to levels or stats or whatnot, all there is is items that you can get, it doesn't really matter. You can go ahead and grab a new character and start the next scenario. And the way it's over is when there's literally no characters left to choose from. So you'll write down on this little score sheet, this guy here, what characters have died, how many wounds they have, um, any other specific things that you need to note, and you keep playing throughout all of the different cards. And there's a 24 cards for the campaign, but there's like 30 in total, so you can do some one-shots. And if you have the expansion, it includes some more cards, a new scenario slash campaign, and additional uh, big baddies that you can add to the, the game as well. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, even though you never suffered a wound, period. No. Callie got to keep her, her character the entire time. And I Killed had to- two of them. Well, one lived, <laughs> yeah. but with a ton of wounds, and I decided to switch. So if I ever go back to him, he's gonna be super wounded. Mm -hmm. And the other one died. And so we're down one character in the campaign, which is kind of cool because you progressively go through the game with your team and new team members show up, other team members die. And if you can get through the whole thing with what you have, that's great. In fact, having the expansion helps because it gives you an extra character too. <laughs> so uh, what do you got? What's your, what's your thoughts? So oh, like overall in general about the game, what did you like? What did you not like? Um, it was pretty fun to do, but I wish I had a better understanding going through it. Well, this is your first, first time. time playing a dungeon crawler, yeah, your first time messing with a rondel, and this kind of put both of those together, and it was kind of not really a deck builder. I mean, I guess it does, it is a deck builder. You are building your deck with yeah. wounds. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other good cards you get, just wounds. I didn't mean to leave you guys in the dust, but <laughs> that's what ended up happening. You left me on the, you left the priest and you left the sorcerer sitting there like trying to fight. I, I, I healed no <laughs> wounds the entire game as the priest. And our warrior was just like, treasure, treasure. Okay, you know what? I didn't know that would happen. Now I know. So when we play it again, <laughs> I can do better. <laughs> Maybe you'll go for a treasure that's more easily accessible, that's not up on top of a roof. You know, I didn't know when I went into it that that would happen. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's fair too, because yeah, there's a bunch of different types of terrain and they have a cost to it. And it, the cost actually ranges after, after three, it gets pretty nasty. It's really hard to get through a five. And so you have to really make that decision. It's super close to us. However, it's up on a tall citadel, so is it worth going for as opposed to just running all the way over here and grabbing this one? But realizing that these are all also tiles that block you. I should have went for this one. Yeah, it's a little safer, I suppose. <laughs> um, and I would, of course, like to see more, I'd like to progress through the campaign more because there's even more stuff you can do. There's victims yeah. you can rescue and when you vet rescue victims, you'll add those victim cards to the response deck, giving you plus fours and plus fives that only benefit the heroes. So there's like useful cards that will get added to this deck, whereas some of them, are really, really bad in this deck here, especially if you're drawing them for the enemy, which most of the time you do. How many actions does the enemy get? Five. How much bonus to an attack do I get? Minus one. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. And yeah, th that can happen in the game. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, what else? You anything else for it? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I would like to try again and... <laughs> Would Redeem you like to continue yourself. the campaign we're playing now, or would you like to start all the way over with brand new characters? I'd rather start over because, I mean, one is completely dead and two are very wounded. <laughs> Mine is the only character that is unscathed. Completely unscathed, the tank. <laughs> And, you know, that's, that's kind of nice as well. I mean, would you rather play a one-shot, or do you want to actually go through the whole campaign? Hmm, I don't know. I feel like I'd want to try both because I've never done this before, so I want to... Experience the whole campaign. Yeah. And it goes, it's pretty long. There's probably like 
10 or 12 different games and they and you can branch off you, you can choose different exits and go to different campaigns so there's kind of mm -hmm. like a, a spider web of different choices in the game so i'm glad you liked trying a dungeon crawler uh, actually a friend of mine is the artist for this game and uh, like i said i really really enjoy this artwork which is the main reason why i asked to get the game um and everything else quality everything is exceptional as far as the game's quality goes the only thing i have to say about the game in a negative light is i can't stand the wounds going on top of the deck i wish they went into the discard pile so I could draw better cards in the deck or previous wounds that I got because it really, really, really hampers you when your character gets damaged and suffers negative stat effects and the next card you draw is gonna be a negative card and usually at that point in time is when you need a good card because you're yeah. surrounded by enemies. So I would even, I'm gonna check the variants because a bunch of easy variant modes um, and I'm gonna play the game on hard mode but hopefully with a, a variant that lets me not have to suffer these wounds on top of the deck. I don't know if it's there or not but I just really hated that. That was my one mm -hmm. thing that I just couldn't stand. And I think I would even house rule that these go into the discard pile just so I don't have to draw nasty cards every single time. I draw a nasty card, I take a wound, I put another wound on top of the deck, I take a nasty card. And healing, you can heal yourself with either the wounds or the character can heal you with the card from your hand. So you don't get to do both. When you heal a wound, you don't also heal the card that's in your hand. I'd rather do both as well. Yeah. I hate the wounds. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the wound system. But yes, anyways, otherwise, though, this is a fun game. This is really good. I'd rather play this in the, des the Descent. I love the boards here. Yeah, I, I got nothing else to say to you other than if you liked a Dungeon Crawler, if you want to try a Dungeon Crawler with a Rondell system, which I've never seen before, then Perdition's Mouth is something I would highly suggest you play, as long as you don't mind characters dying, because they will die. The game is challenging, and you can make it even more challenging if you want. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game. Perdition's Mouth. <laughs> Abyssal Rift. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up your copy. It's a pretty massive game. There's a ton of content in there, so you probably will you get your money's worth with this one here. Oh, and I didn't even show all the player boards. Or the, not the player boards, the game boards. These are all the different maps, and they're all double-sided as well. So, there's a, a lot. Yeah. It's not just tile system. These are all big boards here, like this one. I don't know how come I didn't mention that. Um, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And then, of course, we also have our... What is it we do? Live stream. Every? Sunday at 6 p.m. Yeah. 6.30. 6.30 p.m. PST, <laughs> where we do games. We play games just like this one here. Maybe not this one. This one's pretty massive. Uh, take probably a bit of time. Well, yeah. I guess we could, technically. But yes, games similar to this one here. We get uh, stream, we play games, we do giveaways and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you can also do one last thing. The most important thing you can do for us is you can do what? Subscribe. That's right, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, hit the like button, comment down below what you think about Abyssal Rift, if it's something you'd be interested in playing. Um, and that's pretty much it. What's our, what's our outro this time? Look forward to seeing you what? In the um, Abyssal Rift? Yeah, better one? In Perdition's Mouth. All right. <laughs> and as always, we look forward to seeing you in Perdition's, Perdition's Mouth, Mouth next, next time. time.